Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to discuss scattering and tunneling in one dimension. So before we get into that in detail, first of all, what does it mean? Well, we're going to be concerned with the motion of a quantum particle on the real line. So from minus infinity to plus infinity. And during the course of its uh, motion, it's going to encounter an obstacle. And this obstacle is going to be modeled by a change of potential energy. It could be many obstacles, but we're just going to consider one particular, the particular case of one obstacle. So before we get into that, let's discuss some considerations related to classical mechanics. In particular, let's consider the typical Hamiltonian kinetic plus potential energy in two dimensions. So one space dimension, x, and the corresponding momentum. So energy is conserved classically, the Hamiltonian. And so let's consider a fixed energy surface p squared over 2m plus v of x equal e. Now we can solve for p and we get a positive p and a negative p, but pay close attention to this. Whenever you get square roots you need to make sure that the uh, quantity underneath the square root is positive or have some good reason if it isn't. And this is classical mechanics, classical momentum. So this only makes sense when the total energy is larger than the potential energy. However, quantum mechanically, this constraint can be violated, as we will see. So we're going to begin our study of the motion of a quantum particle on the real line by considering a constant potential, a constant potential everywhere. This may seem trivial in some sense. Um, well, it is, but it actually is the essence of all the problems we're going to be considering, or all the ones you might want to consider in one dimension. And we'll see what I mean by that as we go along. So in the case that the potential is constant, V equals constant, the time independent Schrodinger equation is given by this expression. And so we have two cases to consider. Total energy larger than the potential and total energy smaller than the potential energy. Of course, we could consider when E equals V, but we'll set that aside for the moment. That's a fairly easy case to consider. And so we'll look at the other two. So in this case, let's define what we're going to call the wave number K to be this quantity. And it should look familiar, square root of 2m, e minus v. We just consolidate constants in the Schrodinger equation. And it looks much more nice. But this, we, we know how to solve this equation. And the general solution is a, e to the ikx, and b, e to the minus ikx. And we've seen previously that these functions, e to the i k x and e to the minus i k x, are eigenfunctions of the momentum operator. So if this wave function models the motion and I'm just rehashing what I just said here models the motion of a quantum particle on the real line, then this term corresponds to a particle moving from left to right with its momentum, and this term corresponds to a particle moving from right to left with its particular momentum. We can compute the probability current, and this is going to be very important when we consider these scattering problems, for 
this particular wave function. And this is a nice calculation to do. Remember, this is the uh, expression, general expression for the probability current. And we go through this calculation and we end up with this expression here. So I urge you to repeat this calculation and get the same, arrive at the same answer. Now, there's one important thing to mention is that um, these terms in the wave function are not normalizable. And we derived the notion of probability density, probability, and therefore probability current. We use normalizable wave functions. They aren't normalizable in this case, but these are still useful. We're only going to be using the probability current in a, in a finite neighborhood or where the potential energy changes. So it's, it's still useful. And remember, when at the beginning of this chapter, when I talked about physical properties that the wave function must satisfy, single valued, uh, continuous. We also had the property I described in there, go back and have a look, that the wave function and its partial derivatives must be continuous across boundaries for wh at which the potential energy changes. And we're going to use that fact quite a bit here. Okay, that's one case. Now what about when the total energy is smaller than V, the case that's not classically possible. Well, in this case, we're going to set K tilde equal this quantity. The nonlinear, uh, sorry, the Schrodinger equation, time independent Schrodinger equation becomes this. And this has solutions that are exponentially growing. They're not e to the i kx and e to the minus i kx. They're e to the e to the k tilde x, e to the minus k tilde x. Okay, so this is an important point that we're going to need to consider carefully. Because, and we've seen this in a number of cases already, we're going to want the wave function to be well behaved at infinity. And clearly, e to the plus or minus k tilde x has problems at, at both ends of infinity, plus and minus infinity. But we will deal with that when we get to it. Okay, so that's a good uh, place to stop for the moment. Next up, we're going to be considering step potentials, and that will give rise to some very interesting phenomena. So, see you next time. Bye.